So, Atlas had a pretty good 2021, but what about 2022? Persona Central has an article basically taking Famitsu's article about Atlas in 2022 and translating it. Multiple creative heads put in their input, so let's see what they got. So, Shinjiro Takata, first creative department, his keyword for 2022 is challenge, which I think is interesting. Does that mean a brand new game in terms of a development challenge or port? Interesting. His aspirations for 2022? He says, I chose challenge as the keyword for 2022 with the hope to release a game that will become a pillar for Atlas. All of us at Atlas are working hard to develop this game, so it will be interesting and satisfying for everyone. So please look forward to it is interesting he says that like it's an mmo or something because a lot of mmos are like pillars for their respective developer could this be an mmo i mean i don't think so but sega did partner with microsoft for um their azure architecture so maybe definite maybe in the latest report section shin megami tensei Fi's development has just come to an end and i'm taking a breather but i'm sure i will be able to announce something this year 2022 as well, so look forward to it. When he says that, I imagine he's talking about a port because the other people in this article are talking about ports, or at least some of them, and not uh, Takata-san, so maybe he's talking about a new game, which could be interesting. What to look for in 2022? I've been looking forward to the sequel of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for a long time. It's a game I was so passionate about that I forgot to eat and sleep, so just the thought of playing it again excites me. Um, I mean, good for you, man, I guess. I, I didn't think Breath of the Wild was worth not eating and sleeping for, but you do you. And when he says that, does that mean that Atlas is making a Breath of the Wild-like game? Because he says a game that will become a pillar for Atlas, and Breath of the Wild is like a, it's a big thing. So, Breath of the Wild-type game from Atlas? Interesting. Let's go on to uh, Katsura Hashino. He's the third creative department for Studio Zero. Uh, he produced Persona 345 and Nocturne and Catherine. His keyword for 2022 is to be cautious and careful from beginning to end. His aspirations for 2022 are, until last year, 2021, Atlas released titles from various series. It's finally time to develop a completely different new game from Atlas. The development of Project ReFantasy, which was announced a few years ago, is now reaching its climax, despite some twists and turns. So I want to remain focused and work as a team to bring it to fruition. This is also an important year for us to start working towards the future. To the best of my capabilities, I would like to continue to create games that will add to the enjoyment of the game life of all players. Latest report? We can't say anything concrete yet, but we're preparing for a lot of things. Look forward to it. Thanks. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, Okay. What to look for in 2022? In recent years, there's been a lot of uncertainty in the world, but the announcements and the releases of various games give us something to look forward to. We want to do our best to make sure that the content of our games will be something to look forward to. Thank you for your continued support this year. Now, when he says that, again, they don't they don't say if they're talking about ports, remasters, or like brand new games entirely, so it's kind of up in the air. Okay, so next we have Naruto Hiroka. Hiraoka? I don't know. He's the Atlas Managing Director. Uh, he was involved with Nocturne, Persona 3, and 4. He is currently in charge of the entire game development behind Atlas. Good God. <laughs> Sounds like he has a lot of responsibilities. Uh, his keywords for 2022 are worldwide. As we all know, multiple Atlas games have recently got a worldwide release, including Persona 4 Golden, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, and most importantly, Shin Megami Tensei 5. His aspirations for 2022? Our last year, 2021, Atlas celebrated its 35th anniversary. The Persona series has also reached its 25th anniversary. This year, 2022, we will continue to work on commemorative measures and focus on making it more enjoyable for everyone. Once the c has settled down, we would like to actively create opportunities for direct contact with fans, not only in Japan, which we have not been able to do for a long time. That's interesting. That's quite interesting. Latest report. We finally released Shin Megami Tensei 5, and I'm relieved to have the weight off my shoulders. For future Atlas titles, we have received various requests from everyone, and we are always referring to them. We hope you'll look forward to them. Now that sounds more like port territory to me, so they it just depends on what requests they actually heed. What to look for in 2022? For games, I'm looking forward to the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I think its unique game experience is what made me so passionate about it, so I'd love to see it again. 
Personally, I'm also looking forward to Sword Art Online Progressive Skurzo of a Dark Dust. Imagine liking SAO, couldn't be me. Next we have Kazuhisa Wada. He's the second creative department of the Persona team. His keyword for 2022 is Persona's 25th anniversary. His aspirations? As we work on various projects simultaneously, I would like to keep in mind flexible thinking and decision making, responding to changes as they occur without wavering from the goal. It's hard to see years ahead in the future, and right now our priorities are shifting from speed and timing to certainty and maximization. The key is to be optimistic and scramble through any obstacle that is pushing against you. Latest report? Following the release of Persona 4 Golden for Steam, we will be releasing a remaster of Persona 4 Arena Ultimax in 2022. Of course, we are steadily working on new things, but for the Persona series, I think it's also important that as many people as possible around the world can enjoy the series through a variety of media, including past titles, events, and collaborations. The 25th anniversary of Persona will continue to go on, so please stay tuned. What to look for in 2022? The most interesting question is when people's lifestyles and social guidelines will settle down. In terms of entertainment, it's a real event. I'd like for someone to go look a few years ahead, and then he laughs. I would also like for someone to go a few years ahead. Cause I'm tired of wear your goddamn mask. Last year, Wada also talked about moving forward with steadfast resolve, even if unexpected obstacles might arise. And that's the end of the article. The Persona 25th anniversary was brought up quite a lot, and interestingly enough, the anniversary for Shin Megami Tensei was not brought up at all which SMT's anniversary is 2022, so uh, kind of odd how it wasn't brought up, but I really hope they do something. Me personally, I would like to see the Digital Devil Saga games come, as well as the Raido games. Those would be cool. They obviously didn't discuss any games in this article because they wouldn't want to announce a game in a Famitsu article. It seems kind of dumb. But according to the recent leaks, Persona 3 coming to consoles and PC is likely, as well as a Persona 4 Golden port to PS4 and Switch. If you follow Zippo, you'd know. I also actually, funnily enough, I had a script and I even recorded a video for the Persona 3 and 4 leaks, but I just never published it because the video was so short, it's like why even bother? This video is longer thankfully since I'm reading from a long article, so yeah. Adding on to my bit about Persona 3, what Atlas will do with the remaster is very unknown at this point. There's three different versions of Persona 3. There's just Persona 3, then there's Fez, and then there's Portable. And all these versions, other than Persona 3, because they're not going to pull from that, that's the version with the least amount of content. So what fans are theorizing is that they're going to port Persona 3 Fez and then add on the Portable content, but the problem is they're trying to get so many things out the window at the same time that I don't know if they're actually going to do that because the portable content is very very different in terms of presentation so they might either add that on later or they only port portable or they only port fez what they're going to do is unknown at this point yeah they it's weird how they didn't mention smt at all especially because that's a pretty big pillar of their business as well as persona they talked about re-fantasy more than uh, smt me personally I'm a bit wary of re-fantasy, because we've seen literally nothing. We've seen, what, like, three pieces of art, and that's about it. They say the development is reaching its climax, which is interesting. I really hope that's true, and I hope it turns out good, because they have shown frighteningly little. Last year, they said, expect re-fantasy news, and then the year before that, they said, expect re-fantasy news. So it's been internally delayed many times. Obviously COVID, so that's fine. But even before that, they were saying to expect re-fantasy news and it never happened, so I'm kind of wary of this game's development and I hope it turns out well. It's also interesting how multiple people mentioned Breath of the Wild. Clearly, it's definitely a game that they're all very into. And like I said earlier, could that mean that they're making a Breath of the Wild type game? Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to it, for sure. But the problem is, Sega's already making a Breath of the Wild-like game with Sonic Frontiers, and not that they're gonna compete or anything, I just don't want Sega's release schedule to be oversaturated with Breath of the Wild clones. Not only that, but the industry as a whole has just been obsessed with Breath of the Wild, and the problem is games keep trying to replicate that, and they don't do it nearly as well as Nintendo did, and it just, it just seems kinda like they're chasing a trend, and it's kind of annoying. I think that's it though. If you guys like the video, comment, like, subscribe, all that. I'm currently working on my Strikers review. I have 
the majority of my script done. I have a couple little things to add, but that's nothing. I'm also getting a new capture card soon, so I can actually record 1080p 60 footage. So I might do some live streams here soon. Not sure though. Oh, SMT5 review. So I'm still not that far in SMT5. I'm on the second Lamu boss fight, so I don't know how far that is. I'd like to be done with the game by uh, February, because I have school obviously and I don't, I don't want to mess up school just to review a video game. So that'll hopefully be done by summer maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm giving myself a big window to get things done because I'm not, school. YouTube is not a priority over school, so I think that's it. Join my Discord, and uh, yeah, see ya.